Hi, everybody, and welcome to this new episode of SageMaker Fridays, uh, Season 4. Season 4. Uh, my name is Julian, and I'm a principal developer advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. And once again, please meet my co-presenter. Hi, everyone. So my name is Segolen. I'm a senior data scientist working with the AWS Machine Learning Solution Lab. My role is to help customers get their ML project on the right track in order to create business value as fast as possible. Thank you for being with us once again. So uh, in this new season, uh, we actually have three parts. So uh, the first part is about building models, building high quality models. Uh, so we look at things like uh, data prep, um, uh, feature stores, uh, bias analysis, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And so today we're going to look at a, a financial services use case, uh, fraud detection. Okay. But we'll talk about that, uh, of course in a few minutes. Uh, then we have a second part in the season where we'll uh, revisit some of those use cases, but focus on automation and ops in general. Okay. And finally, we'll close the season with a, a third group of episodes on AutoML, uh, where we go the easy way, maybe, uh, let's see, and just let AutoML build models for us. Okay. And, and I guess we can compare them to the, to the other ones. And, hopefully, you know, see that we've done a better job. <laughs> uh, so this is the GitHub repository for today's episode. Okay, so uh, take a screenshot, we'll, we'll show it again at the end of the episode. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions during the episode, please ask all your questions. We have uh, friendly moderators who are uh, here to help. So make sure you learn as much as possible. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, so Sego, what are we doing this week? So this week we are going to work on a fraud detection use case. Uh, we will try to figure out if an auto insurance claim hmm. is fraudulent or not. Okay. You love fraud detection, right? Uh, yeah, it's a good use case. And we will also analyze a bias in the data set and we will apply mitigation techniques to build a better model with okay. maybe a better accuracy. Okay, interesting. So <laughs> a, a reasonably, and let's look at the, the pipeline. Oh. Uh, yeah, a reasonably simple mm -hmm. problem. Okay, we have uh, claims for, uh, you know, car accidents. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we'll see the data set in a minute. Plenty of information on the on the claim, on 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 uh, on the users, etc. And obviously, we want to figure out if this is real or not. Or we're trying to you know steal money from, <laughs> from the insurance company, which is not a good thing. Okay, <laughs> generally. So um, so this is the, the the pipeline, so to speak, uh, the architecture we're gonna we're gonna work on. So we'll start from a CSV data set, um, which is reasonably reasonably simple. And then we're going to process it. Okay, so we have uh, we have processing scripts um, that that we can apply, and uh, and then we're going to train a model, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to run a bias analysis using uh, SageMaker Clarify. So we'll see if we have any potential bias it's issues, bad. right, and and what those are, and then we'll work on trying to fix mm -hmm. those issues uh, using uh, mitigation techniques and we will train again okay and uh, hopefully we by doing so we achieve two goals first we remove potential bias and maybe we get a better model we get a, a, a more accurate model okay so let's see if we can uh, if we can get this done okay all right so yeah why, why don't we get started uh, let's uh, <laughs> close this slide. Okay, we'll go back to the repo later on. Okay, leave my demo glasses on. And here we go. Okay, so first things first, I guess we, we, we need to look, um, we need to look at the data set. Mm -hmm. Because the problem is really, it's binary classification, binary right? Classification, yeah. So let's, let's look at the, uh, let's look at the data set right away and see what we have here. Okay, and it's not very large, right? It's not a huge data set. No, it's what, uh, 5,000 claims and uh, 5,000 customers. Okay, so like small that. scale and yeah, so training will be fast, but mm -hmm. still it's, it's an interesting data set. And I think it's uh, th uh, synth synthetic, synthetic data, yeah? data okay. set. 
All right, so it's uh, it's completely uh, it's completely fake, right? No <laughs> no personal information whatsoever. <laughs> so if we look at the claims data set, um, we see okay. So we have a policy ID. Let me zoom in maybe a little bit. Uh, who the who the driver is, right? Uh, with respect to the uh, I guess the owner of the policy, is it the person itself? Is it the spouse? Is it the child? Child? child. Yeah, yeah. yeah I never I never that. crashed my car. <laughs> this seems to be a popular thing to do when you're 18. Uh, what kind of incident you had? Uh, where the collision took place? How bad the incident was? Uh, you know, how many vehicles were involved? Did you crash on your own or did you crash into <laughs> someone else? Number of injuries, well, that's not so funny. No. Uh, police reports, date, so the, the, and, and yes, the of fraud. course, the, the fraud, the label. And we can see lots of zeros. And, and sometimes. Okay, a few uh, ones. Okay, so that's, that's good. Well, I guess that's good, right? Most people are honest, <laughs> like, right? Uh, but some people are trying to, you know, steal from the insurance company. Hmm, not nice. Not nice. Okay, so that's the claims uh, data set, and let's try the customer's data set. So obviously, okay, policy ID, customer age, how long you've been a customer, number of claims in the last year, uh, which state your policy is registered in, uh, your premium, you know, lots and lots of uh, gender, um, which... Okay, well, which should be looked looked at, right? Because usually, you know, potential bias lies in what what we call sensitive, sensitive. attributes. Sensitive. Uh, so you know, gender, uh, ethnicity, uh, you know, maybe maybe education, maybe other things. So I would say, th personal, very personal yeah. things. So we can take a look. Uh, we see, unfortunately, we have uh, missing information. So you know, male, female. Okay, we will go back to that. But hmm, let's keep let's keep a note that yeah, we're gonna look into this. Okay, so as you can see, simple data set, uh, and uh, and uh, a reasonably simple binary classification problem. So here we see numerical values, we see categorical okay. values. Uh, same here, right? Um, yeah. So for example, severity is clearly a category. So you know we need to apply processing okay yes, yes. we can't we can't just go and train like that uh, so what are we going to use for that that uh, formula <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> all right SageMaker data wrangler okay uh, and if you watched last week's episode we already uh, covered it um but let's let's look at it again i think it's um you know it's a it's a reasonably simple way yeah intuitive way intuitive. To, to work on your data so, for example, let's look at maybe claims. So, the first thing you do is you import your data, which is just you know one click away. Here's my data in S3. Okay, go, and then you, uh, all right, you see your uh, S3 data source. Mm -hmm. uh, you can apply uh, data types. Um, data Wrangler will generally pick up the right type mm -hmm. for each column, but you know you may want to double check. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have steps. So here, you know, we've done this again. Uh, previously because there's no point is in watching me click 32 times uh, creating 32 transforms uh, so let's uh, let's take a look and uh, and see what what those look like um, so we have quite uh, we have quite a few right uh, we see custom pandas we see string formatting encoded. Uh, one hot encoding Encoded's for categorical true. variables mm -hmm. again applying types etc etc so maybe let's look at strings, see what we've done here. Okay, so here we see a sample of the data set, and we see the list of transforms, and we have you know, hundreds of transforms, you know, missing values, outliers, and uh, working with columns, okay. you know, all kinds of things. Just go go and explore. And and you know, when you don't find what you what you need, then you can apply custom. Or you can apply custom formulas, and you can apply custom transforms, PySpark and does. Price SQL. SQL. So reasonably flexible. Okay. Mm -mm. Uh, okay. So what did we do here? Remove symbols. Okay. So for example, here we removed symbols from driver relationship just just in case we had 
any weird thing in there. You never know, right? Data is, is messy most of the time. Mm -mm. Um, so that's one example of uh, of cleaning your data. I'm guessing we've done the same. Yeah, we're getting the same on collision type. So and you can quickly iterate uh, interactively here and, and add your transforms mm. and and build build that list of uh, of transforms that uh, um, that clean up your and prepare your data. Okay. Uh, I guess we've done similar things on uh, yeah we've done similar things on customers. Um, so we see again one hot encoding. We see some custom pandas here. Oh yeah, replacing uh, education levels with uh, actual integers. Uh, so there's actually a built-in transform for that, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, wh why not? You could you could do it this way as well. Uh, yep. Yeah. Again, more custom pandas. I think this one is custom pandas. No, it's not so with the time. Uh, so oh yeah, so this one is actually yeah, it's it's uh, this one actually creates a new column, and inserts a new column with um, a timestamp, mm. and uh, and we're doing this for the other data set as well, and we'll need this for the the feature store. We'll, we'll get back to that, but yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, we can see it here, right? And it's always the same value because it's okay. The timestamp is now and just store that value and that will give us a timestamp for this version of the engineered feature okay but we'll, we'll talk about that later okay all right so now we've done uh, those different things okay on on the two data sets uh and now it's time to process the data okay so there are many ways you can do this okay uh so here again you know this is kind of a preview to check that the transforms work as intended and, and you know that you've actually implemented cleaning and engineering the way you want it now if you want to run this on the full data set uh, you can actually export your steps so you can select actually you can select the steps you want so if you wanted to skip a step or you know try different variations mm. why not okay so i'm not going to select them all because i'm not going to click uh, uh, 19 times boring but okay select all your steps and then you you have this export button that mm -hmm. appears and then you get four options four options okay so i guess the the basic one would be i just want to apply all those steps to my data and please save the result to s3 okay mm -hmm. so you can do this with stage maker processing mm -hmm. in a fully managed way um and that's all there is to it so this actually creates a jupyter notebook with all the, oh, okay, let's, why, why don't we do this? Mm -hmm. Click, okay, all right, so we have a, a generated notebook, okay? Um, you, we've got our inputs, uh, so the, the data set, uh, our output will be the process data set, uh, we upload the inputs to S3, and we run. That's it. Okay, so you can just run this, not, nothing to edit in there, just go and run, okay? And then you end up having your uh, process data in S3. Um, you can export this to Python code. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this will be uh, independent of uh, any AWS service. So if you want to bring that code into your machine learning project, mm -hmm. it's pretty nice. Uh, you can export it to another notebook that um, uh, obviously transforms the data and uploads it to feature store mm -hmm. which is actually what we've done uh, for the rest of this example and you can export it to uh, a pipeline built with SageMaker pipeline but we'll get back to ops and automation in another episode okay so it's all those options are one click away uh, and uh, and so here um, in the interest of time uh, we have uh, processed versions of the data set you can find them here right okay. claims processed customers processed but yeah please feel free to go and actually export and mm -hmm. uh, you know run maybe the uh, run the processing job and and you will actually find those same files in s3 exactly the same okay uh, and uh, yeah maybe we can open one of them and check that it's actually doing what it should do um, yeah, so we should one. see, do we see one hot encoding? Yes, the second one. Um, Incidence severity, yeah. but I know. 
Oh yes, okay, yes. So this one has been uh, this one has been encoded to integers, and uh, driver relationship has been encoded to integers. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, we see. Okay, we actually see one of encoding here. Yeah. So self, uh, spouse, spouse, child, child etc., etc. Et 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 um, and a few more things. So hopefully. <laughs> All those things we've done are actually reflected. In oh, collision type. type. Collision type. Yeah, we can see. It. Okay, so it's in there. All right, Perfect. it's in there. So now we have a we have a reasonable uh, we have a reasonable data set. Um, okay, fine. And I guess the other one is fine as well. Okay, so once again, you have in the repo you already have those. So if you want to skip processing and jump to training, go and and do that. But you know, please explore the uh, the That's other right. steps. Okay. Okay, so now that we've applied all those, I would say, reasonable mm -hmm. uh, transformations, um, let's visualize the data. Mm -hmm. And again, I guess you could visualize the raw data as well. Uh, but here, you know, we, it's more, uh, you know, uh, it's more cleaning and, yeah. uh, and and the really basic stuff that we've done. So I mm -hmm. guess you know, it, it's fine if we if we visualize the process data. It's still uh, it's still reasonably easy to understand. So you know, we load the pre-processed files and mm -hmm. for example we can plot uh, gender uh, so obviously we see some imbalance mm -hmm. right um, is it a problem is it not a problem um, you know it's hard to say it's, it's not it's not a it's not very severe imbalance no. you know it, it's uh, the, you can see the ratio is it's uh, okay so we have 70 percent about 70 percent male and about 30% female. So mm -hmm. it's not a huge imbalance. I mean, some problems have, you know, one to a hundred, exactly, one yeah. to a thousand, mm -hmm. uh, even more, you know, even sometimes more, yeah. extremely, extremely imbalanced uh, problems, uh, you know, one to thousands. Uh, and that, that's very, very hard. Here, okay, we, we could say, well, um, you know, maybe we still want to fix it. Okay, maybe, you know, maybe we actually have to fix it. Maybe you know we have uh, regulations and and you know uh, rules that mandate that we balance. Okay. balance that and okay. That uh, but okay, for now let's just go and, and train like this and and you can see if this is a problem or not. Okay. Okay. Another thing we want to maybe try is plot fraud versus non-fraud. So like I said, most people are really honest. Honest, you know. Yes, thank you, honest people. <laughs> Uh, and we have a very, we have a few percent, I guess, uh, fraudulent transactions. Good so news. yeah, so that's <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a more imbalanced yeah. problem right here. It's, it's more version. one to one hundred. So mm -hmm. you know, we need the model to really work hard at uh, you know picking up the uh, the fraudulent transactions here. Okay, uh, and we keep plotting you know education levels and the amount of uh, the, the 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 claim amount. Um, we could also look at, you know, uh, fraud by gender and, and we see the ratio is, is really kind of the same. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's about the same, you know, it's about the same ratio as the, the number of male and female mm -hmm. customers in that data set. So, so it looks like, you know, the, uh, you have as, as many, uh, uh, honest men as honest women. So that's pretty good. Uh, we all knew that. Uh, we all knew that. But okay, so it looks like we don't have a problem here. We just have a, 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 a an imbalance on, uh, on 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 gender, but probably not on fraud. There are more visualizations below, but again, in the, you can keep exploring. There's yeah. lots of cool stuff in there, but in the in the interest of time, you know, we we want to spend more time on, on the other parts of the of the demo. But yeah, please read the rest of those notebooks. Okay, so we have processed data. We see some imbalance uh, on the uh, on the sensitive attributes. Feature. Yeah. Okay, so but let's keep let's keep training, and then we'll see. Uh, What's yeah, if there's a problem or not. Okay. Okay, so we have processed data. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, we're using those pre-processed files. But if you had run your uh, SageMaker uh, data render flows, you would have the same. So now we want to move that process data to uh, SageMaker Future Store. Okay. 
Uh, and so um, um, that requires uh, a, a schema. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And, and, and there are really two ways to do this. Um, you need to describe the data that you're going to ingest in your future store. So you can, you can have this explicit, um, uh, this explicit JSON mm -hmm. uh, dictionary with the, with the types. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can, uh, you can apply them uh, when you create a feature group or uh, you can let feature store uh, infer the types automatically, automatically when at ingestion time. Okay. And in this case, we are ingesting from the pandas data frame. So you, you could do that. Um, you pick, I mean, you pick your option. Personally, I, I, I prefer, you know, to, to be exactly sure mm. what gets ingested. Um, but if you're 100% sure that your pandas data frame has the right types, then that works. Okay. That works too. All right. Um, okay. So now that we've done this, we can move and create our feature groups. Okay. So again, feature groups are objects that reflect, mm -hmm. uh, um, reflect the data source. Okay. So here we have CSV files. We could have SQL tables or Dina uh, tables, whatever. Um, and generally you want to have one feature group uh, per data source. Okay. okay. But in last week's episode, we also created a feature group from uh, a join, mm -hmm. uh, a join, uh, a table coming from a join uh, query. Right. right. So you can, you know, you, you can be very flexible here, but here in this case, we'll have one feature group for claims, one feature group for customers. So you just give them a name, right? Just like that. Uh, you load your feature definitions, so those uh, schemas we just saw, mm -hmm. okay? And then you call create to create them, okay? And you have, once again, those two important, oops, those two important columns. Recon. Okay, so record ID. And event time. ID. Okay, so what are those for? <laughs> this is a primary key. Yeah, so record ID is really, yeah, is the... The unique ID yeah. that describes um, a, a, a row in the feature group, okay, and corresponding to a row in your uh, uh, in your data source. So yeah, it's kind of a primary key, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so event type and and the timestamp which you yeah we mentioned earlier where uh, uh, we want to uh, set a, the time at which the feature was created mm -hmm. because over time we could manage. Different version. We could different. We could manage different version. Okay. Um, all right. And obviously, in this case, um, in this case, uh, for the for the policy for the claims, we use the policy ID as the unique ID, and uh, and I guess we're using. Uh, yeah, we're using that. We're using the policy ID in both cases because it's present in both data sets. So that works. Okay. So we create the two feature groups. Uh, all right, and we we wait for a few minutes for those uh, objects to be uh, okay. to be created. That's uh, that's super uh, super fast, and now we are ready to uh, to ingest. Okay, um, so in last week's episode, we actually run a SageMaker processing job mm -hmm. where we ingested automatically. Uh, here we're using a different technique where we explicitly ingest the data in the running that code in the notebook, mm -hmm. right? Not on a not on managed infrastructure. So basically, you just call that ingest API. Uh, you pass your data frame, the number of threads, and whether you want to wait for the operation to complete or not. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, and and if if some rows fail to ingest for whatever reason you get you know you get the row IDs and you can retry them. Okay, so we push all that stuff, uh, and so what happens then is that data is written to S3 um, in the what we call the offline store. Uh, we, there's also an online store that you can use for prediction, but again we'll probably talk about that in future episodes. Here we're basically pushing that data. To S3 in a well defined format uh, with the timestamp and everything else. Okay, so we wait for a few minutes, 
for all the data to flow. Uh, we check um, the actual bucket for uh, objects. And okay, once we see those objects flowing, then fine. Okay. So, uh, so at this point, we've processed the data, pushed it to the feature groups, mm -hmm. and now it sits in S3. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So now it's time to train. It's time to train. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so what 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 are the main steps? Um, well, first we need to build a data set, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and you can say, wait, 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 wait. We have a data set, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's in there. Well, uh, we have data sources, right? Ah, that's a difference. You know, yeah. you we have data sources, mm -hmm. um, and and maybe you know maybe we need to do a little more, right? So the thing is, you know, sometimes you have like you know. Maybe everything is your CSV file, right? Mm -hmm. So the data set is actually one CSV file, and that's it. So in this case, fine. You could work straight from there. Here we see we have two data sources. You know, some machine learning problems have maybe 20, 50 mm -hmm. data sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you want to use different features. You want to try different subsets of your data. So that's why feature store is really interesting. So you just process everything, push everything. To feature group or and feature sure groups, and then you can pick okay. what you want. Okay, and this is what we're doing here, um, because when we create those feature groups, we automatically create a table in Amazon Athena. Mm. Okay, so let me show you the Athena console here, and we see those. Uh, okay, fraud detect demo claims. And we see all the information here. So and I guess we can preview it. Okay, well, no surprise, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you see here is Athena querying the data in S3. Okay. okay, so I didn't create something extra. Okay, I open Athena and run run this run this thing automatically. Mm. Okay. So there's no other table, there's no other backend, there's no, there's nothing really here. There's data in S3, uh, there's a, a table and a schema automatically created in Athena, and then I can go and create, when you create use stuff. It. Yeah. When you use it yourself. Yeah, so that's that's nice. Mm -hmm. for uh, Even for data exploration, it's yeah, super it's useful. Mm. And of course, we have the same for uh, stories, and we can preview. So that's that's right there. So uh, so we could actually write the query here, and then when I'm experimenting, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> I write the query here, and then when it works, I, you know, I move it back to the notebook. <laughs> uh, you need to put quotes everywhere, double quotes. Don't forget. <laughs> yeah, because the main reason is uh, those table names have uh, you know dashes, mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah, see, so you need to uh, to escape them otherwise. Uh, this creates all, works, all yeah. kinds of syntax <laughs> issues. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the query here is basically uh, a join where we join uh, claims and customers mm -hmm. on policy ID. Okay. So that now, okay, so we here's the uh, the actual query, okay, and then we run it. Okay, it runs very quickly, and uh, actually, why don't we? I'm going to try something silly. Why don't you try this? Ah, Sego is stressed. No, I don't love like him. <laughs> I think it works. Perfect. All right. Perfect. All right. Perfect. <laughs> See? Machine learning. It's it's SQL and uh, CSV. Most oh of my it. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we see our data set, right? So. So now what we have is, uh, you know, we have the policy ID and then we have we have the claim ID somewhere down there, and you know we have everything on the same on the same row, Perfect. right? So not too hard. Okay, so we run the query. Uh, we the we get the result as a, as a data frame and yeah by the way it's uh, you can also uh, you could save the result uh, you could export the result as a csv file it's in s3 blah 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 it's uh, it's very easy here but here we want to continue with our notebook okay so 
uh, move that to data frame and yeah, we see the same thing. Okay. Okay, so now we're starting to, and we're saving that to, to a CSV file. Um, one thing we need to do, because we're going to train with our good friend XGBoost uh, again, is we need to have the label at the front, okay? uh, which is the, uh, uh, the next JBoost requirement. The first column needs to be the label, so that's not the case here, uh, which is why we just, uh, we just move the fraud column to the front. And so, yeah, we drop the, and, and yeah, we just uh, split for training and test. We save to CSV files, and we upload that stuff to S3. Because again, that's where SageMaker wants the data, okay? So we see the training set now is fine. Fraud is the first column, and then we have all our features. Okay, and we can, uh, we can move on to training, okay? Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, so good. It, so far, so good. Not, uh, not too hard. Okay, now we're ready to train. So training here is really, really super simple. Uh, let's move straight to the good bit, which is this. <laughs> uh, we define. Yeah, you can read all of it later. I just want to show you the good bits. Um, we define the infrastructure requirements. Okay, that SageMaker will manage automatically. Uh, and then, okay, we define hyperparameters, mm -hmm. okay? So it's a logistic regression, you know, binary classification problem. And these are the vanilla hyperparameters uh, for XJBoost. You can use the one you already know. Then we create an XJBoost estimator. So XJBoost in SageMaker is available as a built-in mm -hmm. algo and as a, a framework. So the built-in algo doesn't require any code from you, mm -hmm. right? It just requires a data set. Uh, if you want more flexibility, you can actually pass a script, and this is called framework mode. And here, uh, we can actually see this little bit of script that receives the hyperparameters uh, on, on the command line. So this is called script mode, very useful feature in SageMaker. And then the rest is, uh, is vanilla, um, is vanilla XJBoost, right? And then at the end, we save the model in a well-known location. Mm -mm. So that's very, very nice. OK, so we configure our estimator. Uh, here's our script, uh, infrastructure requirements, hyperparameters, where to store the model. And then we call fit. OK. Uh, and so that creates that, in, that uh, manage instance. And uh, it loads the Exibus container, the script, the data set, puts everything together, and off we go. <laughs> and it trains for 77 seconds. And AUC, which is the metric we use here, Zero. is 0.79. Okay, let's try and remember that. Okay. Let me try. OK, so we train the model, um, and it's, it's OK, I guess. It's not awesome, but it's it's okay. Uh, now, maybe we have second thoughts about that um, uh, gender uh, imbalance. So, okay, let's pause and uh, and let's go. Let's jump to this. Okay, and using a capability called SageMaker Clarify, we can uh, run a bias analysis yeah. on our data set. Okay, and this is this is really pretty simple. So you need to set up uh, a couple of objects. So again, you know, infrastructure requirements to mm -hmm. run the analysis, um, data the data set config. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are going to run a pre-training analysis on the data set. Mm -hmm. uh, we can also run a post-training analysis. Mm -hmm. So on the model, this is optional, but we have a model here, so we can do both. Okay, yeah, see yeah. if bias that was in the data set is it's still in the model. model. It could be worse, could yeah. be better, you never know. Okay, so what model to use and then what to look for. So here we have this bias config where we say, okay, you're going to look at customer gender female, which is the one hot encoded mm -hmm. column, uh, which has a value of one. So for instances that have this column set to one, compute bias metrics 
for label zero, meaning uh, no not fraudulent. Not fraudulent. So fraudulent. does this value, so do female customers uh, suffer from some sort of bias mm -hmm. uh, on, on being predicted as honest? Mm -hmm. So in other words, do we predict female customers in an unfair way? Okay. Right, mm -hmm. because there are fewer of them in the data set, mm -hmm. so maybe the model doesn't learn as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so we run the bias analysis computing all metrics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so this runs for a little bit, prints out all kinds of stuff. So we see the metrics here, but you don't want to read JSON, no. All right, what you want to look at is it's a beautiful report, it's a beautiful <laughs> report that we see here, okay, and um. And you can find it, uh, you can see all your training jobs here. Experience. Uh, yeah, and you can see the explainability job. And if you open it for, if open details, you see that, right? That's where it came from, okay? Okay, and we see metrics. So we have, like I said, pre-training metrics, post-training metrics, and we see class imbalance, okay? Mm -hmm. So yes, there is uh, imbalance. We actually saw, saw that in our, uh, in our visualization. Really uh, we have all kinds of bias metrics. We have no time to, to discuss them uh, uh, in detail today, but you can find uh, so you can find any you can find more information by clicking mm -hmm. on some of them or all of them, I should say. And uh, and you can also uh, you can also find white papers and additional information uh, online on our uh, on the SageMaker uh, in the SageMaker documentation. So. We see class imbalance, uh, and generally those metrics are okay when they're set to zero. Mm -hmm. right? Zero means fine. Non-zero means <laughs> a little bit <laughs> not, fine. not fine. So, so we could see there are some differences. I have to say they are not huge. Okay, they are not hugely worrying metrics. No. Okay, um, but you could say well this is. You know, and still, this, this is uh, quite significant. So. This one needs to be looked at. So you can mm -hmm. say, okay, um, let's try and rebalance the data set and train again, right? And and see, you know, see if we actually have a better model on it. Okay. So the imbalance problem generally is something you want to fix, and it's easy to fix. So how how do we fix it? Well, so basically the problem we have is we have um, too many uh, men and not enough women. So you could go, you could go two ways, right? Mm -mm. You could remove men yeah. to rebalance, <laughs> or you could add women. And and there are many ways, or different ways to add women. You could actually duplicate mm -hmm. existing uh, samples. That's one technique, mm -hmm. right? And it sounds weird, but it, it works okay. Uh, or you can create new. Mm -hmm. So you can create uh, synthetic mm -hmm. uh, samples, uh, and that's that's what we're trying to do here. So tell us a little bit about mode. mode. That yeah, no, this is the when you've got imbalance data. So you, as you said, we can either under sampling, over sampling, or using some synthetic data uh, using smooth synthetic minority over sampling techniques. And you're gonna in a nutshell, you're gonna generate a new instance for the minority class. With, with the same quote unquote exactly. statistical yeah. property. Exactly, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the math. And if you want the math, it's it's on yeah. that uh, okay. small documentation and you know, beats me. So I'll, I'll trust it to do the right thing, <laughs> which probably is not the right approach, but that's the only one I can take. <laughs> so we can see initially, yeah, we have here, you know, we have this number of men, this number of women, not, not good. So. So, which is really cool is uh, a library, which is called uh, Im Imbalanced Learn. Mm -hmm. Very, very useful library. It's, it's really, it really takes one line of code, right? So all you do is this, right? You create your small okay. object and then you say, okay, uh, resample, bam. And now, so obviously we didn't, we kept uh, all, those, uh, all those men uh, samples, so to speak, and we have the same number of uh, we can say. One line of code, can you believe that? Yeah, very nice. Very nice, yeah. Yeah, it'd be very painful to do the same here. So. <laughs> yes. Okay, so now we've solved that balance problem. So we can train again. Okay, so exact same code, mm -hmm. right? Exact same script. Uh, run that, uh, create our estimator again, train again, and then let's see what we get. Ah. 
So interestingly, we see that uh, AUC has significantly improved, mm -mm. right? Uh, almost six, uh, six points. Uh, so that's very significant, mm. right? Uh, so, you know, it's, it's really interesting because it was not such a, an imbalanced data mm -mm. set, right? But just doing that rebalancing uh, is, is improving the accuracy because I guess you just give more samples mm -mm. to the model, right? To learn on, yeah. To learn on, right? So it, it, it you know, it, it gets a better a shot at, okay, these are, you know, uh, these are the male specific patterns mm -hmm. and these are the women specific patterns if there is such a thing but apparently there is right so just giving more data to the model increases accuracy so it, it, i think it also tells that smoke is doing a good job yeah right because if those synthetic samples were crap excuse yeah. my french <laughs> you know accuracy would uh well, our that. auc would actually be horrible yeah exactly so well done smoke and maybe we can check the the final matrix Oh yeah, and, and the yeah, bias metric. yeah. So we can run we can run bias again. So mm. it's the same. Yeah, the code is below. You can you can run it yourself again. It's it's exactly the same. And so if we look at the bias now, uh, we can see well, class imbalance is zero because guess what? We made it. <laughs> yeah. We made it zero. <laughs> we made it zero. Okay, and and the other metrics didn't change much. Mm. Um, so we would need to dive a little deeper yeah, and. Course and see, you know, uh, maybe build a confusion matrix. Yeah. Yeah, um, because apparently, you know, we're predicting better. So, you know, are we predicting better for men? Are we predicting better for women? Are we predicting better for both? You know, where does that extra accuracy come from? Uh -uh. Um, you know, we would need to go and investigate a little more. But as you can see, it's, it's really easy to compute um, those metrics. And, uh, and in a few minutes, you get a, you get a good sense of uh, you know what's uh, what's going on in there. Thanks to clarify this is very really nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 very nice. Yeah. It's uh, you know it's a really cool, uh, really cool and really uh, easy to use service. So again, we're, we're here we're doing pre-training and post-training, but you know you could do uh, you could do pre-training only if you just mm. wanted to analyze your your data set. Okay, well I think that's pretty much what we wanted to show you today. So to uh, to recap. Uh, everything you know we what did we look at so we looked at we started from uh, um, a binary classification problem mm -hmm. CS two CSV files we uh, imported them in data wrangler we uh, process them uh, using a list of transforms mm -hmm. uh, we uploaded them to SageMaker feature store uh, that makes it really flexible to uh, you know pick what you want in that data using Athena, run some queries, build some data sets, train some models, evaluate them uh, for you know accuracy AUC, but also for uh, for uh, bias yeah. and uh, and clarify makes that really really easy. And uh, I guess we'll come back to this. Uh, there, yeah. there are a few more things we want to show you here, you know, on deployment, um, registering models, automation, uh, looking, yeah, yeah. automation, figuring out, you know, model uh, and artifact lineage. There are all sorts of good things to, to, uh, to discuss. Uh, but it's the end of this episode. And so we'll, uh, we'll be back in September with, uh, and we'll take another look at this. Okay, so let me, uh, let me show you let me show you the repo once again if you want to take a, a screenshot okay and this is the one so go and go and run this have fun ask your questions get in touch and um I say go thanks again thanks for again. your help in preparing and uh, and uh, and delivering this and uh yeah we'll see you uh, we'll see you next week with uh, another example on detection concept Oh yeah, the computer vision. Computer vision. Oh yeah, computer vision example uh, on on cancer cancer detection. So not not a funny topic, but a really important topic. And we'll see you know uh, how machine learning can help uh, working with image data sets. Okay, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll see you there. Okay, so on uh, August twentieth. Okay, Sego, thanks again. Bye bye. Bye bye everybody. Bye bye. Have a good week. See you soon. Bye Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Mm-hmm. <laughs>